Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live here in San Francisco covering Google Cloud's event, Google Cloud Next 18, hashtag Google Next. 18, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Lakshmi Sharma, Director of Product Management Networking for Google Cloud. Um, we met in Denmark at KubeCon, part of the CNCF. Great to see you again, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Great to have you on. We've been hearing so many people talk about the networking. Dave, I know, has got a lot of questions. And it's come up, the performance, the low latency, even we had a deep tea on earlier about Cloud Spanner. Customers, I moved from Oracle because the low latency. Low latency is the killer app for networking. That's right. <laughs> Tell us what's new, what's happening at the show for you and, and your group. So a lot of things happening. You, you must have seen the announcements yesterday around, around Cloud Service Platform where GKE is a very kind of you know, inherent part of it. And anywhere where you talk about hybrid, you know, it wouldn't happen without connectivity. It wouldn't happen without service discovery, load balancing, so networking is inherent part of a lot of that hybrid story that we talk about. This morning we did a demo of Cloud Armor on, uh, in, in a keynote session. So Cloud Armor, which is our, a, a, all the years of infrastructure work that we had been doing in, at Google, protecting our infrastructure services, leveraging that knowledge and also protecting our edge for our customers, enterprise customers in cloud, so there is a lot happening in networking. And what's interesting too is that, I mean, I like the hybrid thing, we were actually joking off camera that I don't think Google actually needs to do hybrid because we just go to Google, <laughs> but I see how you'd want to you know, manage the objection, maybe sales inhibitors, but it should look like a cloud. Mm -hmm. I think that's what everyone wants to do. Networking from one company to another has always been kind of a challenge. How are you guys solving that inter-cloud, inter-networking mm -hmm. challenge? Because it's hard to get a, an SLA if you're going to be moving workloads around the cloud. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys talk about that inside Google? Because this is something that's come up a few times. Mm -hmm. You get software-defined networking. Mm -hmm. What's the solution for moving workloads in and out of the cloud? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And, uh, uh, that's, um, that's an area where we have launched some products like not just from Google perspective, but even with partners. Because we do understand wherever it comes to hybrid, when you talk about gigantic petabytes worth of load migrating, like you know, Hadoops and other kinds of data, you do need a network which is reliable and where you can offer SLAs. So uh, support for interconnect, that we have, where we, and we have launched Interconnect with partners, Partner Interconnect, and offering SLAs for that Interconnect, so that your customers can come to you and reliably, and that at giving you the same infrastructure capability that we will have for our connected services, that's where we are coming from. So yes, uh, services like Interconnect, giving SLAs on them, so they are enabling a lot of these you know, data migration stories and uh, allowing uh, mission critical applications to be moved over. All right, so I have a question for you. I want to throw this out there, and I might throw you for a curveball, but you're smart, so I know you, you'll, <laughs> you'll get a good answer here. The whole show's about AI. Uh-huh. And software-defined and virtualization, we've seen that go up and down the stack. How is AI or machine learning being used in networking? Because we see Cisco here, right. and, the, and the big theme that we're connecting the dots in is that network data uh -huh. is actually really good for right. working with things like uh -huh. containers and Kubernetes, GKE right. and Istio. Uh -huh. So you're starting to see policy concepts of Correct. networking go up the stack. Correct. So how is AI being incorporated into this? Can you share your reaction and commentary on, on what's going on there, the vision or any top product mm -hmm. features? So brilliant, so security and machine learning and AI that's just in Google's infrastructure DNA, and I sit in infrastructure team, right? So, a product that I mentioned earlier, like Cloud Armor, which is built upon all the learning that we have had from a security and protecting our infrastructure against the global attacks. So we had been learning that, we had been offering that to our end users with the YouTube and Gmail and other services anyways. Search. And a lot of that, yeah. right, search, right? <laughs> so all of that has been going in, and we had been learning Throughout, a lot of machine learning, a lot of that logistic, you know, a lot of that heuristics has already been offered through that infrastructure, and we are now leveraging that, and we want to be able to offer that as services to our customers, right? So it's been there. So it's right? there. It's, been it's there. We just we just need to kind of bring that infrastructure learning and to the cloud users, to the enterprise customers. And we we saw a demo this morning in the keynote. It was mm -hmm. to protect against DDoS attacks. 
which is a, is a pretty impressive demo. Right. And so, and like you said, that's just there. It's an inherent part of Got the it. application. They have what we do, right? It's not an afterthought for us. How about the how about the undersea cable infrastructure that you run? I always, I always watch videos of that stuff getting laid and. Yeah, I think you've laid down, I don't know, another three, four, five, even and maybe five this year already. Uh -huh. um, talk about why that's important and how that's strategic to, to Google. Oh, very nice. Uh, 13 so far, like 13 subsea cables we have. So we have this uh, concept of you know, global VPC. And uh, VPC, which is like a virtual construct which manages maps to, let's say, an organization, or you know, if you can go multiple hierarchies, it's a construct that, that we represent in cloud, it's, it's global, and we call it global VPC, uh, because of that infrastructure that is laid down. And the reason that when you go you know, across Atlantic, when you go from US to you know, EMEA region, the reason that we can still give you that guarantee and the speed and the bandwidth, that you get in the network is because of that infrastructure that we have laid down. So that is very uh, inherent part. All that infrastructure that we have laid out, including subsea cables, it makes our global VPC and global infrastructure. There's no, inter reach. There's no interconnect. There is no it's interconnect. Straight in there. Google. Exactly right. Very good point. So if you needed to go and if you were another kind of VPC where you go regional VPC one, regional VPC two, oh. then you'll be going to another service provider, then you'll be setting up contracts and commercial and IPsec VPNs or some kind of peering policies. You don't need all of that because you're just going over yeah, It's more expensive. Oh, absolutely. So what's the product straight? You're head of product management, which means you look at the product features, you got to decide what to put in, what to put out. It's like deciding as a chef what to make the meal the best here. <laughs> you know, it's like, and, and you got to balance customer needs and engineering, happiness and, mm -hmm. and priorities, some foundational things. What are some of the things that you're working on that you'd like, that you want to share that you think is important for people to know about? So um, in this at Next, we have uh, announced a couple of things. Uh, one of the things we are uh, very proud of is our capability within the uh, container or the networking space. So we make a load balancing and networking native for containers. So we launched something called Ingress, what we call Ingress with a multi-cluster support. So for the first time, I would, uh, you know, for the first time I would say, in, from a you know, product offering perspective across the board from any provider, you would see load balancing working natively for containers. What it means, this, you know, the, the bandwidth optimization to reach to your containers and your services and the latency that you need. So keeping our promise of making containers as a native citizen or you know, first class citizen in cloud, mm -hmm. that's what I'm proud of, what the team has done and in that space. And the benefits of that native local native load, load balancing. Native load balancing is that now, now you, you get the same, ex yeah, you, you get the same experience, you get the same value from global load balancer and you get the same CDN experience, you get same cloud uh, armor experience because now the same infrastructure will support your VMs and your containers in the same manner. Mm -hmm. So same policy, going back to your point about same policy, same way of configuring, and same way of managing your infrastructure. Nice, it's continuous, consistent across. Yeah. Well, and that enables more, you know, greater degrees of automation if you Absolutely. don't have to sort of deal with multiple mm -hmm. different configurations, so. Yeah. Talk about the Google uh, relationship, Google Cloud relationship with Cisco. Obviously, we're very impressed with Cisco here for two reasons, one is we think, this is going to be a major benefit for mm -hmm. Google mm -hmm. because, you know, not, not that you don't have any salespeople out there, but you know, the people would say, oh, they don't have any salespeople. Well, I think Cisco's one of the best enterprise sales companies on the planet. Uh -huh. They have the most enterprise customers running their routers and switches and everything else. Um, but they also co-developed the cloud services platform. How is it affecting your product mix? Are you involved in that? Are things you guys working together on? Are you providing value to them? Mm -hmm. How do you relate to that relationship? Um, so, um, like in any other, uh, say, hybrid provider, I would say, our focus has been, as Google has been, that, you know, build, increase and enhance the open source ecosystem, right? So that cloud is real, so that hybrid is real, right? So taking Kubernetes, taking Istio, make, so, First we brought up the container management framework, you know, that was the one story, or not just one off story, but that's just kind of one 
method of doing hybrid and multi-cloud possible, and then you bring in a service abstraction layer because, like you said, policy and how do you deploy it and how do you uh, distribute your load, that's important. How do you discover your services? So in all those areas, Cisco has been working. They have been contributors as well, and uh, and that's kind of, that's, that's the way we work with them. So enabling hybrid because, as you said, they understand enterprise networking, where okay. enterprise scenarios very well. So we can leverage their enterprise knowledge, we can learn from them about enterprise patterns, and we can build towards you know, our common uh, services platform, cloud services platform uh, um, you know, framework and make it for the best use of cloud plus enterprise customers. Lashmi, tell me, um, take, your, take your head of networking product manager hat off for a second, and put your industry observer hat uh -huh. on, and knowing what you know. What's the big story here at Google Cloud this year? In your opinion, um, what's going on? What's the big story? I mean, there's some nuanced points. We love Istio shipping 1.0. Right. I mean, I love, I geeked out on that. Obviously, GKE, super nice. Tons of, I mean, there's a right. ton of things. What are the most important stories that are being told here? So, okay, I'll, I'll just, this is my opinion, personal opinion, and I, uh, the fact that we, we have enters large enterprise customers on stage with us, you know, we ha this Google has been innovative company. This is an engineering company. So this company has that DNA already, right? Like of innovation. But being able to understand enterprise customers, being able to understand partners, and then get them together to truly work on solutions that matters to enterprise customers. To me, personally, I think that's, that's what is really clicking me in, at this next. And we have worked really you know, hard as product engineering and partners and customers. This is real and I'm very happy about it. You guys are if, I, if I may, to me that coincides with the recognition, the strong recognition by Google that the world is hybrid. Right, I mean, for years we've been hearing, oh, from all the legacy guys, the world is hybrid. Yeah. By the way, they're right. Mm -hmm. But they've had the advantage for a while that you know, maybe you didn't recognize that, mm -hmm. and others didn't recognize mm -hmm. that. You've now embraced that. That's yes. a big flip yeah. yes. in the mindset. It's interesting yes. you mentioned engineering culture. Dave and I was always at the Cube's our ninth year doing the Cube. We go to all the enterprise events. And then, you know, years ago when Google's getting in the cloud, and it's like, John, what do you think about Google in the cloud? I remember saying, Dave, they're engineers. They're going to write an algorithm for the enterprise. <laughs> so the algorithm is figuring out yes. if there's math behind the enterprise. Right. You got customers, what right. are their needs? Right. You got partners, what are their right. needs? How does the ecosystem right. work? How's the money shift? Who right. makes more money? I mean, Sorry. it's a business model. Yes. Just got to figure it out. Right. And engineer right. the solution. Yeah, and then the best thing is like, you know, if you heard at Diane's keynote, like Mike, uh, Mike from Target, like the CI of Target. Like he was Tar yeah. right? Mike Tamara. So he, he, when they asked him like, so how did you make the decision? I think the question was around who made the decision. He said, my engineers made the decision. <laughs> so I think that's playing very well in our strengths because we are an engineering company and we have understood now what's the business model and what's the partnership model, engagement model with enterprises. We have the best of the both sides now and that's what is clicking. Well we really appreciate um, the success. We'd like to see the momentum. Um, my final question for you is, I know you're doing a lot of women in tech uh, advocating within Google. I attended your women in tech <laughs> cocktail hour I kind of gate crash it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I was, was. It wasn't a sign that said no guys allowed, but <laughs> I was the only guy there for a little bit. Um, Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> met John in a yeah. gate crash. <laughs> <laughs> He's known. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> I know. I do weird things. <laughs> no, but it was a nice moment. You were bringing all the Linux Foundation, CNCF folks together. Mm -hmm. You sponsored the party, so mm -hmm. thanks That's for right. doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thanks to my team here at Google. Like you know. I, I was very new at that time, like just a couple of months, and then they supported me to kind of organize that event. It was a great opportunity to meet many other talent, and yeah. thank you for crashing in, because it's about women in tech, but you need all the people like who yeah. can support that ecosystem. Yeah, great. So. Well, we love the mission, love, Real passion love shining the light on smart women in tech, really as role models, and also just, it's a great conversation to have about, about the contribution and smartness and the greatness of what's going on. And remember, half the population is women, and we need more women building products that yes. represent yes. half the population that uses yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for the article that you did for all the strong women that we have, engineering leaders and the product leaders at yeah. Google. Thank you so much, they that was They deserve every, every word of it. I wish I had yeah. more lines to, to write, almost 2,000 words, appreciate that. theCUBE bringing you all the action here at Google Cloud, a lot of great things happening here. Of course, theCUBE is bringing all the action. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're in day two, we've got a whole nother day tomorrow. Stay with us, more coming on theCUBE today after this short break. <laughs>